Polygon has been starting to gain quite a lot of popularity over the past few years. So just how good is their $3,600 enduro bike that shares the frame with their Enduro World Series race bike? The Cisco N7 is the lower down model of the Cisco N9. The N Series is their top of the range enduro bike designed around the Enduro World Series by the UR team last year and it's designed for all kinds of rowdy terrain and big jumps. Whoa. This bike is available to buy from Bicycles Online in Australia for just $3,600, which is a very nice price for the spec you get on this thing. The N7 uses Polygon's faux bar linkage. They claim it reduces frame weight and adds stiffness, and it's also quite a progressive and supportive linkage. Because it's so progressive, you could put a coil shock on this bike with some of the money you saved from buying it instead of the more expensive options. Internal cable routing for all of your cockpit keeps the nice neat look and integrated chain stays keep the noise down and also help with cable management. The rear axle is a 12 by 148 boost width which allows for wider rims and tyres giving you more grip and stiffness. The bike came in a standard bike box, pretty much almost built up. Bicycles Online does a check over the bike, builds it up from the factory and greases everything, checks all of the gears before they send it to you. So that once they've sent it to you, which by the way only took two days, all you have to do is put on the dropper, bars and front wheel. With the travel numbers of 170mm front and rear, you'd expect this bike to be super long, low and slack, but Polygon did something different from the rest of the comp competition. The geometry is quite short with a 435mm chainstay and 1183mm wheelbase and this allows for a more playful poppy feel of the enduro bike. The bike comes in 27.5 and 29 inch wheel options so you can go for a more stable longer option or if you want a shorter bike and prioritise playfulness and agility like me you can get it in 27.5 and a lot shorter frame sizes. How Polygon does their sizing is Small and medium are in 27.5 and then medium up to XL can be in 29. So medium gets a choice, small is 27.5 and then everything above is 29. This helps for shorter riders get smaller wheels just to fit their sort of body size and the same with larger riders. On this bike a RockShox Yari comes stock. To set it up you open the compression all the way, put the rebound about 8 clicks and set the pressure to the chart on the back of the fork lowers and you get a pretty good small bump with it ramps up quite nicely and you won't blow through all of the travel too quickly. The Fox Float DPS that comes on the bike isn't as good however. You can either have it set low pressure and it will be good on the small bumps but blow through the travel even with volume spaces or you can have it good for support but it'll be really horrible on the small bumps and have quite a harsh feeling. Because it's an inline shock as well, it becomes pretty inconsistent on longer descents and heats up quite a lot. One plus of the DPS is that it has a full half and open lockout. That allows for easy setup and you can have it locked out just for the climbs if the 170mm travel is a bit too much for you. This shock is designed for XE and trail, so it's not a surprise that it doesn't do well on a 170mm enduro bike. The bike comes with 780mm entity bars. They're quite nice and have a good amount of rise and sweep for me, but for a larger rider they might want a slightly wider 800mm bar. The entity seat that comes on the bike is really nice, nice and comfortable in a good size and shape. But it also has this cutout of the back to stop you from getting tyre buzz and causing crashes. But because of that cutout, if you're wearing baggy shorts or riding shorts, your pants can get stuck on the seat when it gets really steep or while you're dismounting, which can be a problem. The Shimano Dior drivetrain works amazing and it shifts perfectly, has good clutch, everything you'll need, but I just have a few little problems that I have with it. First is that these cranks are a bit too long, I've had quite a few pedal bashes when I'm pedalling on flat sections of the trail. Also the paint rubs off from your shoes which just takes away from the look a little bit. Also for some reason the drivetrain gets quite muddy and mucky very easily so if you don't like doing full cleans of your bike it might be something to think about just get yourself a good degreaser.
The rims that came on this Leica Entity XL2s, when I first got it I thought the 35mm internal width would be really good and these things would be indestructible, but I was very wrong. Within about four months it's got three really big dents and the tyre is not seated properly at the moment, so I've got a new, hub, a new rim coming pretty soon. It was a bit disappointing, so you might want to get some cheap rim protection if you get this bike. The brakes that come stock are Shimano MT420s. These are a four piston brake, so they've got enough power. The couple problems I have are that there's no adjustability in the levers, so it's kind of annoying that Polygon didn't choose the 2020 Dior brakes because they're a lot better and just a tiny bit more expensive. The other problem with the brakes is that these front rotors are only 180mm, so it's a bit difficult to get enough power and they can get quite hot after long descents, but that's an easy fix with just a cheap new rotor. A few other cheap bits that I needed to replace were the grips. I've got DMR DAF grips on at the moment and they work fine. The ones that came stock were good, they're lock-on and they were quite comfortable, but they didn't have bar ends on them and you couldn't install them because of the rubber end. So I had to swap them over just so that I didn't stab myself on the bars. The other thing are the cheap metal pedals that came stock with it. Most people would swap them over but I kept them just to try out. They're decent quality and a good metal with good pins, but there's a huge lump in the middle that makes it not good for flat pedal shoes. Despite this bike being one of the heaviest enduro bikes you can get at 16.8 kilos in a 27.5 medium, it climbs pretty well for what it is. You can put the dropper up and just pedal away and you'll have no problems with pedal bob because of the supportive linkage and you don't notice the way too much once you've got yourself into a good rhythm. The Fox DPS shock, as earlier mentioned, has a lockout so you can eliminate pedal bob entirely, but this bike just might not be the right thing if you're racing cross country in the off season or anything. It is an enduro bike so I won't talk about climbing for much longer. On steep and rough terrain you'd think that the short wheelbase would make it really unstable but that's not the case with this bike. I can go into pretty much any rock garden that I'm able to ride at my ability and I'll have no problems with stability and won't worry about the short wheelbase at all. I've reached just off 60k's an hour sometimes and again I've only wobbled a little bit but that would happen on pretty much any bike. For someone who wants a bit more stable bike they could possibly upsize into one of the 29 inch options because they have a longer wheelbase. I think the large has around 1260. When hopping and manualing over obstacles on the trail, it doesn't require much effort because of this short playful trail bike geometry. The short chain stays in wheelbase and relatively steep, or not too slack head angle, make it, it give it an effortless feeling when you're popping over or bunny hopping in the trail or if you need to make a sudden change to your line. You can still make it through the Rathless Rock Gardens or jumps, and it's actually quite nice on jumps because it still has that playful feel. Compared to other bikes, I think it's quite nice the amount of feedback you get from the trail, because other bikes would just hammer through the rock gardens with no feedback and you wouldn't really... It gets a bit boring sometimes. The 65 degree head angle gives it a good balance between control and stability and playfulness and pedaling performance again, just like the rest of the bike's geometry. I've never felt like it was too steep or too slack. The verdict I've gotten from this bike is that it's a long travel enduro machine that can eat up pretty much any trail you throw at it, but still has a playful, lively feel to it. It'll still be agile and supple on the mellower tracks, so it's a good entry level enduro bike for pretty much anyone. That's over.